a seat, come in contact with anyone with the issue, you are considered unclean for one day. You got to wash your clothes and wash yourself. In the spirit ring, we have contacted with people, left blood stains everywhere. You touch her, she touch her, she touch everybody's contaminated. Right. My God. My Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. It calls a fresh anything unclean. Help me, Holy Ghost. I kept saying, Lord, what is your second about your family? This is how he gave me. You say you pray. I say I pray. You say you pray. But the condition never gets better. Because you have hidden agendas, which is the blood. Now, my agenda is that when I come in contact with you, either I'm coming to bless you or coming to destroy you. Instead of identifying myself, I mask it. I cover it up and cope with it. That when I come in contact with you, now I have contaminated you. Now your blessings is contaminated because of the filth that I came in. Oh, God. And I said, what, 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 what's going on? He said, it's a massive tumor in the house of God among the women. When women should be laying out before the Lord. As my friend would say, sending up temple. I still don't understand what that means. What is temple? I think that's sleep. You say you send it up prayer, I can understand that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said laughter is not a situation <laughs> help me Holy Ghost I'm trying to get through this uh, uh, uh. and everyone that shares with you your issues and as well as for her everyone touched her her issues becomes your issues and your issues becomes her issues your issues are situations. Your situations have a solution. Yeah. And your solution is Jesus. All right. Dealing with my issues. Many of you have issues that come with you dealing or coping with things in your life. All right. Not all women have gone through the exact same thing. It has been similar, yes. So as you get connected in a conference like this here, right. it happens. Everyone becomes puzzles. That's right, that's right, that's right. And as you become puzzles, you begin to find your match and you connect. And once we all get connected, it becomes one puzzle, one piece. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I'm going to deal with my issue. I hope you know what you're saying when you say you're going to deal with your issues. Each of you is very important, and that's more ways than you think. And I got tender eyed when I wrote this here. Because all this week, every woman I came in contact, whether she was beautiful or ugly, I'm just going to call it like I see it. Uh, you know, I mean, I ran into some, Lord Jesus, help them. I said, bless the Lord. But what distinguished them was the inside. Amen. They were beautiful. Amen. They were more beautiful than the one that looked it good. But her inward parts was like raven wolves. Amen. So as I began to talk to some of them, and I said, you know what, Lord? This is a beautiful woman down on the inside. Amen. And they began to bless me because I knew I was coming to a conference. Yes. And I said, you got to help me to understand about a woman. And he took me to Jeremiah 29, 11, and he said, I know the thoughts. I think toward you, said the Lord. 
thoughts of peace, uh -huh. not of evil. All right. I said, God, what is you saying? He said, some women have been in turmoil and they don't know that they can have peace. And then he said, I'm going to give you the expected end that you're looking for. So every woman I came in contact all this week, I said, you know what? Blessings on you. You know what? This woman, Lord knows, she had a, 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 a she was deformed. That's, that's the way I can say it, deformed, yes. And I'm not a person to come in contact with. I'm not a person to be hugging all on people. But this woman moved me so, pierced my heart. I leaned over. I said, let me bless you with a hug. Not knowing that she had her issues. Issues was that people looked at her and out cast her out because of her affliction. I'm somebody. You're somebody. Just because you have an issue or affliction, that don't make you not somebody. You are a human being. I loved on the lady. I just hugged her. She began to break me. She said, you don't even know what you do. She said, I don't know when the last time somebody put their arms around her. In her issues, I just stopped her from committing suicide. In her issues, I just stopped her from rolling her wheelchair in the middle of a truck that is coming. Oh, my God. And if we say that we are saints of God, come on, midwives. Those that are 40 and above, it's no way that she should feel like that. I said, oh, my God, what are you doing to the Lord? Help me to understand. I wish there was a man's conference, too. I tell you, too. Treat each other right. Those men that got issues. But that is a woman's conference. I'm going to deal with the women. Get y'all on another date. It's about to say, man up. But women, get connected. And as I did that, and I said, you know what? Life and death lies in the tongue. We got power to speak it, and we got power to kill it. And that when I hugged her, I caused life. I said, now, Lord, if I never see her again, bless her. Bless her. Let somebody else come to her. Let somebody else say, I love you just because you just you. I don't even know what that feeling feel like. Lord knows I don't. I don't know what it feel like to be an outcast if you're homeless. Because they treat you nasty. They treat you less than a human being. You can imagine how the woman felt with the issue of love. Hmm. Oh, my God. I assure you that I am not going to pump you nor give you a feeling or a cheap thrill. But what I can promise you is the power of his words that will make you whole, deliver, heal, and set you free. St. John's 3, 5, and 17 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So those that are dealing with issues that you feel like you can't be saved, I can't condemn you. I did not come to condemn you tonight. Oh, God, help me. I never knew what a woman go through, even in the natural and in the spiritual realm. Woman of God, you will not perish. Let eternal life be your portion. God loves you because he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him shall have everlasting life. And I'm not condemning not one woman, but through Jesus Christ, that you would be saved. Hmm. This woman was desperate. She was earnest. 
She was willing to break social taboos. She was willing to hope. She reached out to him and she was satisfied. This woman <coughs> heard in Romans 10 and 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? As I was thinking about the woman with the issue of blood, yes, she had the issue, but she never would have known that Jesus was coming to town if no one had not preached before her. They preached to her. She heard it. Because I'm helping somebody. Amen. So as I began to look at this here, I said, Lord, I said, you know what? Some women today are not getting the word. They hear, but they're not hearing. They hear what they want to hear. Amen. 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 Forty and over, that's your job. Amen. With the issue of blood, that is your job to say, listen, let me help. I, 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 I'm sorry. We're going to die and go to hell if we don't get it right. Amen. This is a woman's conference. I can't let you leave here feeling no other way but heaven bound. No other way. No other way. I know what it feels like to be on your way to hell. Oh, you can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, know the strength of the cord, know when to speak in tongue, know when to lift your hands, know when to walk the floor and begin to pray and all of this right here. Still got some issues. Seen it in church all my life. Couldn't understand why women with issues still leave the church house, still go back get their drugs, get their alcohol, go by their boyfriend's house and got a husband at home, but she's dealing with issues. I can't condemn her. Now, only did this woman with the issue of blood have issues like, let, excuse me, let's look at the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. She had issues also. This woman had issues. <clears throat> she was longing for a drink, but she didn't know that her issue was going to be dealt with at the well. Let's look at Naomi and Ruth. They had issues. Oh God. Naomi's husband takes his family to the country of Moab. He dies, leaving Naomi to raise two young boys. He, and her issues affected everyone around her. Her sons grew, married a woman of Moab. Their names are Oprah and Ruth. Ten years later, oh God, there go her issues coming back. Ten years later, her sons dies, leaving the wives, husband, widows, and childless, never bearing children, never. And therefore, Naomi never had another child either. Oh, God, dealing with issues. I'm going to tie it together. Their issues are despair, loneliness, helpless. Their dreams have been shattered. Women of God, just like you today, your lives have disrupted with despair, loneliness, helplessness, and your dream shadows have gone. Just like Ruth saw nothing, excuse me, saw something in Naomi, you too adopt a Ruth spirit and seeing to your Naomi, the twisted of the story, Naomi has lost her family, but she gained a daughter. And as I begin to study this here, God changes your situation when you got issues. Therefore, she was a daughter-in-law to Naomi, but she became a daughter later on. Everything that her sons was supposed to give Naomi, she got it through her daughter-in-law, which became her daughter. Because the issues were dealt with when she went back and told her about Boaz. Therefore, okay, she met him. And I kept saying, well, what is the moral of the issue? He said, some women in the church need to adopt, adopt a Naomi. I say adopt a Naomi because Naomi know about the issues. I lost the son, too. You lost the husband. I lost one, too. You never had children. I lost my son. So, hey, you never gained anything. But she had to understand that the issues had to be dealt with. All right, all right. I say to you tonight, adopt you a Naomi. 